welcome to the Scam Economy with your host, Matt Bender. Cryptocurrency in the US, eh, to put it lightly, is screwed. Welcome to Scam Economy, everyone. My name is Matt Binder, and on today's episode of the show, we are here to talk about not one, but two different lawsuits from the SEC alleging that two different cryptocurrency exchanges are selling unregistered securities, and for one of those exchanges, even more than that, can you say fraud, everyone? Coinbase, the largest cryptocurrency exchange in the United States of America, and Binance, the largest cryptocurrency exchange in the world, have both finally been caught in the SEC's crosshairs, and the dominoes are starting to fall. But quickly, before we get to that, go to scameconomy.com for all the links to the podcast version of this show. If you're not already subscribed on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, find links to where you can leave reviews on the podcast on all the various platforms. YouTube.com slash Matt Binder to subscribe to my YouTube channel where the video version of these episodes get uploaded. And of course, if you'd like to support this show monetarily, you can go to Patreon.com slash Matt Binder and become a monthly paying subscriber. Now let's get to how cryptocurrency is going just great, at least in the US. And joining me now to talk about all of the chaos that uh, this week has wrought, well, on on the crypto exchanges, of course, not not us. We're doing good. Uh, <laughs> is one of my favorite guests to have on this show. She's the creator of Web Three is going great. She is a Wikipedia editor. She is the author, writer of the newsletter uh, at newsletter.mollywhite.net. Uh, Molly White, everybody. Welcome Hello, to the show. How's it going? It's going Thanks great. Thanks for having me. No, no problem. Thanks for coming on. I mean, this is, I feel like, you know, we, we, we haven't talked in a little bit. And there was, before this week, I was like, oh, you know, it's been a while. I've got to have Molly on the show. I'm looking at everything you've been covering, trying to figure out what to have uh, you on for. I know there was the... Um, that like state of crypto that Andreessen Horowitz put out a couple, like a month or two ago. And I was like, oh, that could be a good one. And then everything that happened this week uh, occurred. And I saw you did some great coverage and breakdowns of what exactly was going on. And I mean, it, 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 you're here you are. It speaks for, it speaks <laughs> for itself. Um, the opportunity presented itself. Right, yes. <laughs> And so uh, we'll definitely have to uh, reconnect at a later date to talk about the state of crypto uh, <laughs> from Andreessen Horowitz, the big uh, crypto VC. Uh, but uh, more importantly, this week, the SEC going to war with Coinbase and Binance, the largest crypto exchange in the U.S., Coinbase, and the largest crypto exchange worldwide, Binance. What, what's your just before we dive in? What's your take on that? On everything that just happened? <laughs> well, I wasn't surprised um, to see it happen. I think we sort of knew it was going to be coming, especially with Coinbase, because they'd gotten the Wells notice from the SEC in March, which was basically the SEC saying we're going to file a complaint about you unless you convince us otherwise. Um, and with Binance, you know, it's pretty clear that there's some shady stuff going on over there. The CFTC had already filed a complaint, uh, which often means that the SEC will be right along. Uh, they tend to do things sort of in tandem with the crypto industry. Um, so I wasn't surprised, but it is really meaningful, I think, for the industry. Um, it's, it's a little hard to ignore, I think, for the industry at this point. Right. And, you know, I, I it's... How much of this is really we could probably do a whole episode just on this. But, you know, you mentioned that, like, you know, when the Commodity Futures Trading Commission does something, you know, the SEC uh, follows uh, often. Um, how much when it comes to crypto, how much do you think that's like the uh, the SEC and the uh, CFTC uh, feuding over who actually uh, reign supreme over crypto because for for a while they were going 
uh, you know, uh, uh, the the Commodity Futures Trading Commission was like, we, you know, we cover crypto. And the SEC was sort of hands off for a bit until they said, you know, we cover crypto. And the crypto industry is like, uh, we, we want the CFTC yeah. to cover crypto. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think there's definitely a bit of a turf war happening there. A lot of the times you'll look at the two complaints and they're kind of similar, but one will basically just say that everything's a commodity and one will say that everything's a security. Um, and so it seems like, you know, they both sort of feel like they need to just do, you know, get their own lawsuit in. Um, but, you know, it's hard to say. I think they might collaborate to some extent just based on the fact that it looks like they're working from some of the same evidence. Um, there was definitely some overlap in what the CFTC and the SEC both said in their respective lawsuits. Um, but in this case, you know, the SEC lawsuit definitely added to, you know, above and beyond what the CFTC had gone into. Um, it wasn't just sort of a duplicate. Um, but yeah, as far as, you know, whether or not it's a turf war thing or, or whatever, I, I don't really know that well, just because I don't have that much insight into those agencies. But um, definitely some, some uh, elbowing for control going on, at least. Right, right. So l let's let's dive in. And I, I know, you know, so so we're talking right now, Wednesday, June 7th, on Monday, June 6th, just two days ago. June that's 5th. when. What's that? Wasn't it June 5th, Monday? Ju oh, my God. I can't even <laughs> I can't even follow what, what <laughs> what's going on with the days of the week anymore and, and the corresponding dates. Thank you, Molly. Uh, <laughs> Monday, <laughs> June 5th. Uh, SEC uh, filed their lawsuit against Binance. And then the following day, just one day later, um, Tuesday, June 6th, is when they filed, the SEC filed a lawsuit against Coinbase. And, you know, th there, are, there are some overlap. They're, they're both being charged with some of the same things, but they're also, uh, some are being charged with uh, more serious things than others. So let's let's start. Even though this is not the sequential order, let's let's go in reverse and let's start with Coinbase, um, because I think the the juicier stuff is with Binance, and we should keep that till 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 the end. Keep people uh, at the edge of their seat waiting. <laughs> so so break down for me. Um, what 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 exactly is the SEC going after Coinbase for? So the SEC has told Coinbase that look at all these tokens you've been listing. A lot of them look like securities to us. And they've laid out these arguments for they've picked like a dozen or so of the tokens that Coinbase lists. And they've said, we think these are securities for these reasons. And because of that, it means that you are operating as an unregistered exchange broker dealer and I think clearing house or something like that for, for um, Binance. Um, and basically, because you are not registered as one of those things with the SEC, it's illegal for you to be selling these securities to consumers. And so that's sort of what it boils down to with, with the Coinbase complaint. It's very much sort of like a process thing. You know, it's not like they were... Um, you know, breaking the law in terms of fraud or, or things like that, at least not as alleged by the SEC. Um, it's really just about, you know, these assets that you've been selling um, need to be sold by registered exchange. Um, and so it's really what they have been feuding with Coinbase over for, I mean, kind of years now. Um, and so I don't think anyone was super surprised to see that coming down. It was, it was kind of what they'd been warning about for a while. Right. And what how serious is this for Coinbase? Is this like something where they're going to get slapped with a fine? Are are they looking at uh something even more serious where their entire business will be uh uh, uh you know, uh up in the air in terms of whether <laughs> they can even run in the US? And I know there are two separate entities here that SEC is going after when it comes to Coinbase. The actual exchange and then also these same uh, 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 allegations are being pointed towards Coinbase's staking platform as well, which is sort of like a, a savings account 
for crypto, we, we've talked about the, the very, I think on this show, we've talked about various different companies that get involved with staking. And it always seems like such a bad idea to do. It's always, <laughs> it's always like, yeah, keep your crypto with us. Don't withdraw. We'll pay you lots of money. And you're like, yeah, I'm going to keep my crypto with you. Never withdrawing <laughs> until, of course, they uh, go under, quote unquote, really take your money and run away. And, right. uh, <laughs> and then you can't withdraw. Uh, and not only can, uh, did you not make that that wonderful uh, 20% yield, uh, you also don't even get your own hard uh, earned crypto that's been sitting there that you actually paid for. Yeah, right. And that's basically what the SEC is saying about these staking programs is that, you know, because they look so much like investment contracts, that the staking program itself is basically a security. And therefore, they need to be doing the types of disclosures that would be required if they registered as a security, you know, registered the program as a security, so that investors are fully aware of what is happening with their crypto, where is being stored, you know, are they taking it and then they're actually staking it into Ethereum like they claim, or are they, you know, investing it in some Ponzi scheme somewhere, you know, people don't really have that level of transparency into it. Um, and so the SEC is arguing that these staking programs, no matter how they're structured, really, um, themselves are securities. So that is also a charge that was added to the Coinbase suit. Um, but going into your question around how serious this is, I mean, first of all, like any complaint out of the SEC is a civil complaint. They don't do criminal charges. Right. So it's not like Brian Armstrong is going to go to jail or anything like that. Um, well, but in the, in the, when we talk about Binance, someone well, is not a big... of the SEC action, at least. It's right, that's possible. true. That's true. Right. <laughs> yeah. But with uh, Coinbase, you're right. Brian Armstrong is not going to jail. All right. Well, I'm always afraid to say things too, you know, confidently because you never know what's going on back there. But Brian yeah, Armstrong so probably not go to jail. <laughs> so not look like he is going to jail. <laughs> um, but right. So, but I do think it is very serious for Coinbase, despite that. Um, so, you know, they could be hit with a fine. That could be substantial. It's hard to say exactly how they would calculate. Um, you know, they want basically Coinbase to disgorge any ill-gotten gains, um, which could be kind of everything because, you know, all that their business, you know, all of their business has been selling what, you know, the SEC is saying are unregistered securities, but I don't necessarily know how they would calculate that. Um, I think the bigger thing for Coinbase is that they will also, assuming, you know, the lawsuit goes through and, you know, judge finds them. Uh, culpable for all this, they would be required to basically stop breaking the securities laws. Um, they would be enjoined from operating as an unregistered exchange, broker dealer, et cetera. Um, and that's that's Coinbase's whole thing. You know, that is their business. Um, unlike Binance, they don't have much of a presence outside of the US. So, you know, Binance could feasibly say we're just going to withdraw from the U.S. and we'll keep offering our services to customers elsewhere. Um, Coinbase has sort of started to make gestures towards make, you know, establishing a presence outside of the U.S., but I think it's been mostly symbolic. They don't have that much of a footprint outside of the U.S., and they would sort of have to start over, I think, if they wanted to do that. So... If they were enjoined in the way that the SEC is suggesting, I think it really would be potentially the end of Coinbase um, because, you know, they've said it themselves. They don't think there is a path to registration with the SEC where they could do all the registrations the SEC wants them to do and then just carry on doing their business because, you know, Gary Gensler has said this and I actually agree with him on it. Their whole business is about being unregistered, you know, and doing these things that are completely contrary to securities laws. And so without being able to do that anymore, you know, Coinbase is kind of done for, I think. Right. Um, so what what is like, like, let's actually go go back even to, to some basics here and, and try to and sort of uh, explain for people, like what what exactly like, why wouldn't Coinbase go ahead? Like what 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 is the benefit to uh, customers and then the benefit to Coinbase of registered securities and unregistered securities? So the 
the point behind most of these securities laws are around disclosures and the consumer protections that that would uh, allow. So right now, you know, when it comes to cryptocurrency tokens, you don't get the level of disclosures that you get with, you know, publicly listed stocks, for example, that are registered. Um, not everyone reads the disclosures, but, you know, when there is, when you do buy, you know, a publicly listed stock, there's an enormous amount of information that is published on an ongoing basis that allows you to understand, you know, what the company does, who's in charge of it, where the money's coming from, what they expect, you know, they might earn in the coming months, what the risks are to their business. You know, there's this whole sort of process for all of that um, that does not apply to uh, to cryptocurrencies in any way, really. You're sort of just at the mercy of whatever the developers feel like telling you, and there's really no audit or, you know, third party check to see that those statements are true. And there's no real consequence for someone who does lie in, say, a cryptocurrency white paper or something like that. Um, so oh, that's people, really the... people lying in a cryptocurrency know, white paper. It's a lies. What? I don't. I don't know what you're telling. It never happened. I'm also a little bit shocked that um, you know, some of those uh, tokens that are on Coinbase, which are essentially just uh, a guy who got lucky and was at the right place at the right time when he launched his meme coin and saw a number go up continually. I'm shocked he wouldn't have uh, the numbers and the risks and the finances of his one-man operation ready to go. <laughs> yeah, I would honestly love to see some of the attempts by cryptocurrency uh, issuers to do these disclosures. I think they would be very funny to read. Right, right. But What, um, what are some of the risks to your company? Uh, people selling the token. <laughs> yeah, Elon Musk not tweeting about us—that would be bad. <laughs> yeah, so um, you know that's sort of the point behind uh, the registration. You know, especially on the token side of things, is that the people, you know, the investing public is able to make informed decisions about what they're doing with their money. On the other side of things, there's the registration requirements for the actual platforms, you know, the exchanges, the broker dealers, the various other sort of financial platforms that are involved in all these types of things. Um, and there are requirements under securities laws for how, <laughs> you know, how many of those functions a single business can perform. Um, so, you know, a good sort of uh, analogy is that the New York Stock Exchange doesn't, say, operate a hedge fund, right? Because there would be conflicts of interest there between running the exchange and also trying to make profitable trades. I, um, I personally, I, as you're saying this, I'm personally trying to think of a recent scenario where a exchange also running a hedge fund would be a bad idea. And I can't come up with one. <laughs> no, it's never happened as far as I know. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, certainly not a, a, a company that uh, was all over the news and made headlines everywhere that went under in November of last year, whose uh, very eccentric founder and CEO uh, is also now a household name and probably go to jail for a very long time. Can't think yep. of that person or that company. Certainly. No right. idea. Yeah, and the SEC has their lawsuit there too, so they're they're pretty busy. But for, yeah, so just for the audience, I gotta let them know I'm talking about FTX. So go, right. go ahead, Bob. <laughs> yeah, well, so but it's it is really common in the crypto industry for these companies. You know, they usually call themselves an exchange, but they are performing the functions of all of these different entities, which in traditional finance are separated and sort of for good reason, because we've seen the conflicts of interest and the potential for malfeasance that comes when you have basically one person performing too many roles and, you know, they are suddenly incentivized to trade against their own customers or, you know, use the access to information that they get because they run the exchange to then help their trading arm and all sorts of things like that. Um, and so that's partly why Coinbase and some of these other exchanges have argued that there's really no way for us to register. You know, there's no path to registration. They, they are trying to argue this, that basically the SEC isn't letting them register, even though they so badly want to. And it's because under securities laws, you can't be performing all of those functions as one company. You would have to basically separate and silo those 
uh, functions. And that's kind of the whole point of being the crypto exchange is that you get to profit off of doing all those things at once. Um, and but, this is this is the uh, we should really make this clear. this is the serious crypto company the serious crypto exchange like Coinbase has earned I don't think that's the proper word but let's just go with it earned a reputation as being like the legit crypto exchange all those other ones are shady they're running in like you know uh, some offshore Caribbean island or they're not even telling you where their headquarters is it could be in South Korea it could be in uh, uh China it could be wherever but uh, you know we're not gonna let you know mm -hmm. coinbase has been the one to be like, we're the U.S.-based exchange following all the rules and regulations and policies, and we work directly with the U.S. regulators to make sure we're running a tight legal ship. And the second the SEC comes out and says uh, things are wrong here, instead of, again, what the serious business would do is let's work with the SEC to fix, you know, right the wrongs and get back to where we should be. Apparently, you know, they're they're going to war with the SEC saying we're not going to do this. This is going to put us out of business. Yeah. Yeah. Their argument is basically that the securities laws are wrong and that Congress needs to write new laws for the crypto industry so that they can keep doing all the things that they have been doing. Uh, but legally now, um, rather than say coming into compliance with the SEC. But I mean, they are they are correct that coming into compliance with the SEC would end their business. Um, and they see that as a, you know, condemnation of the securities laws, whereas I see that as a condemnation of their business. You know, it shows to right. me that their business is really the problem here. Right. But now, now the SEC only in, in their lawsuit against both Coinbase and Binance, they don't say like the entire crypto marketplace, like every, the entire idea of an exchange, every single one of those listings, those tokens on there is an unregistered security. I mean, I, I personally think they are. Um, <laughs> it's it's uh, very uh, bizarre to me that uh, the SEC like just randomly, um, probably not randomly for them, but the fact that they only pick like, what is it, like 12 or 13 or something like that? Yeah, somewhere around there. It, 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 like, do do we know why those specifically and not others, or they they just are just deciding just to pick twelve and go with that, and that if they really wanted to, they could go down the line and throw <laughs> them all in there. Like, what's what's the the idea behind just putting a, a dozen or so as unregistered securities? So they only have to show that Coinbase and Binance have listed one unregistered security. They could just pick one. Um, I think they're trying to sort of, A, cover their bases in case, you know, a judge or whoever disagrees with one of their choices. They have, you know, 11 or 12 others. Um, but I think they're also trying to sort of drive home the point that it, this isn't just, you know, Coinbase listed 250 odd cryptocurrencies and oops, one of them snuck in there and it was a security. I think the SEC is really trying to say that, you know, no, really, <laughs> many of these, if not the vast majority of them are securities. And I mean, Gary Gensler in his sort of personal capacity has said that pretty explicitly that he believes basically all cryptocurrency assets are securities with the possible exception of Bitcoin. You know, there's sort of this ongoing debate over whether Bitcoin is a commodity potentially. Um, but yeah, I would I say think it's, that... it's total like, like when I was thinking of it, like, you know, Bitcoin does feel like maybe the one that's a little bit different because there is no sort of uh, like official sort of central company or entity that's yeah. like running, running the, the show there. Yeah, I mean, there's arguments in both directions. You know, there's only a small number of core developers, for example, who have commit access to the Bitcoin repo. And so you could argue that they are sort of the centralized controllers. But yeah, that could be debated. And I think I think reasonable people can disagree on Bitcoin, which is probably why the SEC decided that that was not something they were going to try to fight at this point. Right. Um, I do think that the choice of tokens was somewhat arbitrary, probably. So if you look at the list of tokens in the Binance lawsuit and in the Coinbase lawsuit, there's some overlap, but some of them are different between the two. And so I think it's just a matter of them choosing, you know, some 
tokens that they think are particularly strong examples of unregistered securities where it looks very much like, you know, an investment, like almost as though it's a stock in the company that oh. has issued the token. It's almost shocking to me how like some of these, like some of these I'm, I'm not too familiar with, but when I saw Solana, Polygon, Cardano, it's like, these are like this is literally like these are run by actual companies and guys who yeah. are enriching themselves running these things. Like there's right. even like VC money pouring into the building of these companies that run these tokens. Yeah, how, how they got away with doing that for this long? Like I actually think it's even crazier that they have been able to pull this off than like some guy just throwing a meme coin out there. Honestly, like this right. is like legit comp like corporations with investments running these tokens it's it's baffling to me yeah and a lot of them you can sort of go back in history a little bit the especially the ones that have been around for a while um you know the newer tokens i think people are more careful these days about how they describe the tokens because they know that you know if they describe them as investments or as you know being connected to the value of the company that's issuing them then they're sort of in that danger zone around being classified as a security. But before all of the, you know, ICO lawsuits and all of the SEC actions around those types of offerings, people were kind of playing it fast and loose. And so you can sort of look at, I mean, they, they quote from Binance's materials in the early days of the BNB token, which is their sort of native exchange token. And they are very much describing it as an investment in the future of Binance. And, you know, if Binance does well, if they build this wonderful software like they plan to, then you will get so rich off of your holdings of BNB, which is like basically exactly the same thing as a stock offering. Um, and so, you know, I think it's pretty clear that a lot of these tokens are securities, but you know, the crypto industry has decided that they're going to sort of fight to the death on this one because it does have massive implications for the industry. Right. It's, you know, Coinbase is going all out right now trying to, like, rally the troops. They're even, <laughs> like, some of them are, are some, like, Coinbase execs I've seen are, like, just straight up in defiance saying we're not going to we're going to keep running our. I think they say even said they're not going to shut down their staking right uh, operation which we'll see how that goes um what, what's like the what is it stand with crypto or stand with coinbase they're running with that it's like it's like you got to be kidding me you got to be kidding me yeah like, and, and they're they're blaming the, the 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 thing i've seen that really is is incredible is the they're blaming the sec for not having any issue when they filed for ipo and saying you were fine with our business then, but now there's a problem. Why didn't you like, these are the guys who are, this is like the libertarian technology all about personal responsibility. And their whole thing right now is, uh, why didn't you tell me my business was breaking laws? Like what other like institution, other business is acts that way. Like expects like, the government or the regulators to literally like hold their hands and like uh, make sure they're not breaking any laws. And you know what? Even like like we were just talking about. And then even when the SEC is now doing that, they're going like, no, we're not. No. We're not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of the fingers in the ears type of a response where, you know, even the SEC basically published that in their lawsuit because I think they knew that that has that's been Coinbase's talking point for a long time is like, oh, but we IPO and you were fine with us then. And the SEC has repeatedly told them that, you know, they when you IPO, when you when you go through all the hoops to, to become a publicly listed company, you the SEC is basically checking that you're doing the right disclosures and that, you know, to the best of their knowledge, everything is accurate and complete. And if that's the case, then you're good to go and you can do the listing and everything's fine. But they don't, you know, look at your company and make sort of a merit judgment on whether or not it's a good company, you know, whether the stock price is likely to go up or not, whether or not the things that, you know, every single thing that they're doing is legal or not. I mean, if you think of all the public companies out there, imagine how big the SEC's area of expertise would have to be for them to look at any sort of, you know, airline manufacturer, food service company, you know, any sort of company you can think of and look into the very intricate details of any legislation that applies to that industry and say, yep, you're good to go. I mean, it's just not what they do. It's right. not the purpose of the SEC. 
And Coinbase, when they filed for the IPO and in every, um, you know, every uh, uh, filing that they've had to do since explicitly say that, you know, they, they acknowledge that. But it is a useful sort of PR point that they've been able to make, even though I think they know quite well that when the SEC approved the IPO, it had nothing to do with whether or not their business and all future business would be approved by the SEC. Right, right. They're hoping for like a, a no backsies rule where like, once yeah. you approve me for an IPO, that's yeah. it. You can't say my company you- is not following the law. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. And like they've, you know, they've expanded their company pretty substantially since then. You know, the staking product wasn't around. Ethereum hadn't even done, you know, moved to proof of stake back then. And they're still like, no, you know, you can't come after us for staking because you let us IPO in what, 2018 or whenever it was. Right. Well, maybe maybe Coinbase can, uh, you know, readjust things, move things around and become an exchange that's Strictly and only for the trading of uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it's possible, I guess, but it doesn't seem particularly lucrative compared to their current business model. Right, 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 right. It's much more lucrative to throw, uh, you know, uh, eight out of every 10 tokens that come your way onto your exchange. Yeah. Uh, just, and that's something that yeah. the SEC has mentioned, actually, is that Coinbase came up with this very detailed uh, process that they sort of developed to determine if a token was likely to be considered a security. And they did, you know, they, they've done all of this marketing about it. It's been this huge talking point as they try to convince investors that they're the above board exchange. Um, and then they sort of threw it right out the window. They started listing all kinds of tokens not too long ago. And even basically when they, even in doing so, acknowledged that a lot of these tokens were in the sort of risky end of things as far as the likelihood that they would be considered to be securities. And so the SEC sort of points to that in the lawsuit and says, like, even you acknowledge that a lot of these tokens are just sort of bottom of the barrel stuff that, you know, was likely to get you in front of the SEC at, you know, some point or another. And, you know, your time has come at this point. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see what happens with Coinbase. I, I mean, oh, I should mention, I forgot about this. There was a... In addition to the SEC, though, there was state regulators, too, in 10 different yes. states that came together. And, and correct me if I'm wrong here. I might have misunderstood their press release. These are 10 states. It was like Alabama. Calif- it was led by California, uh, New Jersey, uh, and a bunch of other states. And they basically are giving Coinbase like 28 days to make the case as to why they should be able to continue to operate in those states. And if they don't uh, make that case convincingly, I guess, um, they have to, they're have they going to receive a cease and desist in those states? Yeah, so the, the specifics of what each state did vary a little bit. So some of it is how you described. I think some of the states actually just went out and said, stop with the staking stuff. We're, you know, just quit it right now. Um, so it's kind of a spectrum of, you know, how uh, immediate they all are. But yes, 10 states have said that this whole staking thing looks a lot like a security. Please cut it out. Um, and that was apparently coordinated among the states and timed with the SEC action. Wow. I mean, it'll. I, I'm used to like certain crypto exchanges being like, uh, you could uh, sign up uh, in any state in the U.S. and then a little, a little like uh, <laughs> except uh, New small York. print, <laughs> except New York, right? Yeah. <laughs> but but Coinbase might have to list like sooner or later like uh, 40 states that you can. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. you can't uh, trade win. Yeah, it's it's gonna be f- fun to watch, honestly, to see how this works out. Because I don't see how this uh, works out in their favor. I mean, maybe they'll, may- maybe Coinbase can use that uh, reputation they've uh, uh, grown over the years to try to still push that they're the serious crypto company. So work with us. I don't know, but yeah, uh, yeah it's it's not it looking seems to good me- for them. It seems to me that Coinbase's sort of hope at this point is that Congress is going to step in and, you know, rewrite the rules for them. Um, that that seems like, you know, sort of the the best case scenario for them. Um, it's, such I don't... A, it's such a small niche, though. Like, it's not like there's a whole bustling crypto industry that, like, this is going to shut down, like, uh, a, a swath of 
companies in this uh, uh, growing industry. It's yeah. it's literally just going to affect like how many U.S. based exchanges are there? Like why why should Congress care about companies running their ship uh, in uh, outside the U.S. Really, why should they worry about those companies? It's, it's, well, it would it would affect even non U.S. companies that serve U.S. customers. Um, but you're right that it is sort of a small slice of the pie. But, I you know, mean, the I argument could, how, from... Can we, we could probably name all cr crypto exchanges that are allowed to run in the U.S. <laughs> right now, like, and it'll take like 10 seconds. Like, <laughs> yeah, there's, <laughs> there's not, not a it's, lot. It's not a terribly long list. But, um, but you know, the when you set the sort of precedent here that, you know, yes, these are unregistered securities, you are serving U.S. customers, you know, this would, I think, sort of cascade. Um, and the argument from the crypto industry really is that, oh, you're stifling innovation, you're, you know, pushing it offshore, the U.S. economy is going to suffer because you're not allowing crypto companies to innovate in the U.S. You know, that's sort of the the line that they've been making. Um, and some Congress people have definitely gone for it. You know, there are some real crypto advocates in Congress. Um, but I don't think the last year or so has helped their cause very much. You know, I think a lot of people think of FTX and Celsius and Voyager when they think of crypto and they say, maybe we don't want that in the U.S. You know, maybe it would have been nice if um, the customers who lost all this money in those collapses had been protected by, you know, the requirements that these companies sh really should have been following at that point in time. Right. And it's not like, you know, over the past year or so, like as crypto has been taking a hit, there's been all these customers fighting for crypto like they've been fighting for their to get their money back. Like it's not like anyone's been worried in, in terms of like a large base of like U.S. customers has been yeah, worried been about the like, crypto niche. <laughs> right, right. Like yeah. it's not like there's been a, a, a large swath of these Congress people's constituents like, oh, no, what am I going to do without being able to trade crypto or exchange crypto? It's just not happening. It's people worried about right. their money. And then the 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 get rich quick crypto advocates who are, you know, who are just uh, pushing meme coins on Twitter. Yeah, I mean, I think Coinbase did try to sort of see if they could get some support going. Um, you know, they a couple of months ago, I think, decided to push some update where the app would show you, you know, your Congress people and if they were pro crypto or not. And you were supposed to call them and lobby for crypto. But I don't think it really took off that much. Um, right. You know, I think the people who are interested in doing that were kind of already doing that. And most people who have the Coinbase app just wanted to speculate on Dogecoin and didn't really want to call their senators. Right. Um, I can't so, imagine. Yeah. yeah, I can't imagine day traders being all that politically <laughs> active. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I think I think you're right that there is sort of the missing piece there where, you know, a lot of people that, you know, a lot of constituents for these Congress people have much bigger concerns that are not to do with whether or not they're allowed to stake Ethereum or not. Although it would be it would be I can't, I can't imagine what it would look like, but I, I do have a visual in my mind right now of some sort of like protest outside the Capitol building with all just crypto supporters, like, like a crypto Jan 6. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know if that I'm not getting that kind of energy, really. Right. That's, yeah, that's right why it's only right going to exist in my imagination. It's not, yeah. it's not the, 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 the ground uh, work isn't there. They haven't laid that uh, down. Let's move to Binance now. Uh, yes. Because, Everything we just talked about with Coinbase, you can say the same about Binance, and, and the SEC seems to have done that. Um, however, the SEC is going much further with Binance. Um, before we get to that, that further stuff, I just want to make sure, is there, is there any, anything involving the unregistered securities that the SEC alleged Binance did that that they didn't with Coinbase or are we just going to jump right into the 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 meaty stuff that the Coinbase juicy stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's pretty much the same stuff, you know, it's the the tokens that they've listed, it's 
Actually, there is, yeah, there is a little bit more. Um, so it's they've listed unregistered securities. They have a staking product. And then with Binance, there's also the issue of the BNB token, which is issued by Binance. Um, there is no Coinbase token involved with the Coinbase lawsuit. So they are also charged with basically issuing an unregistered security themselves in that in the in this form of BNB. And then there's also the BUSD stablecoin, um, which the SEC is also classifying as a security. Um, and so BUSD is sort of like the other stable coins out there. It's pegged to the US dollar, but it is the Binance US dollar and it's issued by Binance via a company called Paxos, which is actually based in the US. Um, and which actually got into some trouble a couple of months back, I guess, and had to stop issuing the BUSD token, um, likely as sort of a precursor to this lawsuit. Um, so that is a little bit above and beyond what's going on with Coinbase. There is no sort of Coinbase token involved with the Coinbase suit. Right. Oh, and I just realized we should we should we should mention here because uh, you know you and I we we know exactly what we're talking about when we say Binance. But this is, and it's going to be very relevant in, in what we're going about to talk about next. But this is specifically uh, the SEC going after Binance's, you know, U.S. entity, Binance.us, which is supposed to be an entirely separate entity from Binance because Binance is not legally allowed to to run in the U.S. Like if you are based here in the U.S., if you're in any of the fifty states. You're not supposed to be able to trade at Binance.com. You have to go through the subsidiary Binance.us, uh, which is supposed to be run completely differently because it has licenses that the main Binance platform does not have to run in the U.S. Right. Yeah. And this is sort of a pattern that is common throughout crypto. There was also the FTX US platform. There's sort of a lot of companies that do this. And it's mostly because a lot of the crypto platforms that operate outside of the US, um, they offer these trading products, you know, derivatives and very high leverage that is really just not allowed in the US. And so they have to sort of create this special smaller crypto exchange that doesn't let you trade as many tokens as do and do as many risky things um, in order to get the sort of approval uh, as much as they've even bothered to do that um, to operate in the US. Right. And I'll be honest, I, I, I from what I've seen, uh, it seems like the vast majority of people in the US just don't use those platforms. They just go around it and use yeah. the main platforms if they choose to, like with FTX, uh, with FTX.com instead of FTX.us and with Binance, Binance.com instead of Binance.us. I mean, I, a couple uh, years ago when I was, uh, you know, uh, when crypto was just starting to, you know, really go mainstream, I was playing around with a few platforms to see just how far I could get with some of them in setting up as a U.S. based, like use my actual information, not lie about where I'm based. And they had no problem. Like I think, like like something like I think I think Crypto.com was the only one that I had trouble signing up for. That's uh, a surprise. <laughs> yeah, I, and I think because I'm in New York, not in the U.S., and they were mm. through through like the the main Crypto.com app. Um, yeah. Okay. But like I tried a whole bunch, and I was able to to sign up. I threw like a couple bucks in there just to see if they would even let me. Like, oh, maybe I could sign up, but they won't let me like exchange money was able to do that get tokens <laughs> easy they don't they did not care one bit yeah yeah a lot of i mean a lot of the i you know the attempts to you know sort of restrict us customers has been like you promise you're not in the us okay you know and that's sort of as much as they really require um some of them have had to get a little more strict or at least pretend to be a little more strict as regulators have started to get involved uh but it's all been very sort of wink wink nudge nudge um you know up until the present day i would say right so so what 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 are we looking at here in terms of the more serious charges that the SEC is alleging Binance is 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 been doing because we we you like you mentioned earlier let's let's go he, let, let, let's take it from here you mentioned earlier how um um the Coinbase CEO Armstrong you know he's not mentioned by name they're not going after him as an individual SEC's lawsuit is against Coinbase the company yeah that's different 
with the SEC's lawsuit with Binance because they've specifically named and are, are, are charging um, the Binance founder and CEO CZ. Right. Yeah. So I think that's a really important distinction. You know, the, the two lawsuits were filed nearly simultaneously by the same agency. They have a lot of the same charges. They mention a lot of the same tokens. But I would say they are very different lawsuits um, because the one against Binance is, I think, a lot more serious. Um, so you're right. They name CZ, who is the founder and CEO of Binance and who controlled, at least as alleged by the SEC, they, he controlled um, the whole Binance US arm as well as various sort of affiliated companies that were doing all sorts of stuff. Um, and a lot of the complaints that they're making involve allegations that really could be criminal. Um, and so obviously, you know, the SEC is not an agency that could bring those criminal charges, but they are discussing, you know, what looks like fraud, you know, potentially um, criminal activity that, you know, I would not be surprised to see the DOJ, you know, working off of a lot of the same evidence. Right. So so let's talk about the the first, I, I you know, this, this one always that really like, this, this one really pisses me off because it's... It's such like a messed up thing to do. And it's so obvious it's it's fraud. And that's wash trading. Mm -hmm. And it runs so rampant in crypto. And the fact that so many people have no idea it's going on is crazy. Like you'll always see people like, oh, look, uh, how can you say crypto is failing? Look at all the money pouring into it. Yeah, it's people friggin' selling off their, you know, buying the tokens, selling off the tokens, buying their tokens back, selling off the tokens again. It's all manufactured activity by just the same few players uh, trading back and forth, sometimes trading with themselves, which is what wash trading is. Right. Yeah. And so that's a big part of the lawsuit against Binance is the sort of fake volume, um, which is really, you know, important for a lot of these platforms. A lot of them try to do it because the more volume you have, the more attractive you are as a platform to uh, retail customers, to institutional customers. It looks like there's a lot of, you know, movement on the platform that would make it uh, appealing. And so the SEC charges that the that Binance basically had no controls in place, uh, at least initially and very little ever uh, in place to try to tamp down on this type of market manipulation. Um, and not only that, but they lied about it. So they were saying to potential investors in Binance and to users of the platform that, oh, yeah, you know, we've got all of this human and artificial intelligence that's looking at all of the trading and making sure that everything's totally legit. And, you know, we were cracking down on wash traders and all this stuff when in reality there was just nothing really in, in place to stop that. That, um, you know, they they claimed that they were collaborating with external vendors whose, you know, whole the whole point of their business was to try to weed out uh, manipulation and wash trading. And, you know, when in reality, they had not even integrated the software with the Binance system. And so there's sort of a, a combination of uh you know, issues there around A, not stopping it in the first place, and then B, lying about it. Um, there's also the additional allegation that some of the wash trading was happening from entities that were controlled and operated by CZ. So there are these two companies, um, Merit Peak and Sigma Chain, that are mentioned in the Binance lawsuit, which are basically just trading firms that were owned by CZ, um, they were controlled by CZ, and in fact, some of the same employees that worked at Binance were actually working at these other companies as well. Um, and they were executing all these trades. They were basically big mar market makers on the platform. Um, and it turns out that there was just enormous wash trading happening. You know, the SEC called out a couple examples of it where in, you know, they listed a token and within the first hour of the token trading is like 99% of the trades were just wash trades by Sigma chain and that it was like 70% over the whole day. And a lot of the wash trading was happening during these sort of critical windows where they were seeking, you know, equity investments and things like that, or they just launched a new product. And um, so it, it looks pretty damning for Binance, I would say, as far as, you know, just the egregious manipulation that was happening. 
Right, and they were they were commingling uh, their customers' funds too, right? Which is yeah, like, like this is the the I mean, this is literally everything that FTX was doing. Yeah, uh, it's it's the same thing. <laughs> I mean, I think it's something that's just really common in the crypto industry is that commingling of funds happens everywhere because there are not controls in place that would, you know, account for that. There, you know, if they were registered with the SEC, for example, there would be audits that would be checking to see if this was happening and making sure that the right controls were in place. But because there is nothing like that, it's just happening everywhere, I think. Um, but yes, the, the allegations are that basically Binance was pooling uh, funds. It was not only, you know, customer funds between Binance US, Binance.com. It was also Binance's own money and customer funds were being commingled. They were arguing or they're alleging at least that um, Binance was transferring customer funds to these random sort of affiliated Sigma Chain and Merit Peak entities without any disclosures to customers that their funds were being sent totally to some other place, um, you know, that was ostensibly not related to Binance, although it turns out it was controlled by the same guy. Uh, so it's a lot of really just shady stuff that was happening. Right. I mean, I mean, I. To, to, uh, I really want people to understand how ridiculous this is because, like, it's 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 essentially what what's going on here is it, it really like I know it's so cliche. I feel like now, in how many you know we're we're how many years into the crypto bubble that that seems to have burst, but you know we're uh, calling it a Ponzi. But essentially, everything we're describing here, it's like you know Molly gives me a hundred bucks because I told her. Um, you know, give me a hundred bucks and whenever you come back to get your money, I got a hundred ten for you. And then I go to the next investor and goes, Look, I just made a hundred bucks. Like that's not how it works. Like that's not how things work. Um, that's that's fraud. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the SEC sort of drops some weird little tidbits in there too about how like you know, these millions or even maybe billions of dollars were transferred to Sigma Chain and to these different entities, and then like eleven million dollars of it was used to buy a yacht. And then they just sort of end the sentence there. And I'm like, wait, no, I want to know more about the yacht. But like, there's all these sort of little tidbits in there that I wonder if, you know, there's going to be more coming out in later complaints around misuse of funds and things like that. But that would be something I think that would be more appropriate for a criminal complaint. And so I'm wondering if maybe there's sort of more to come on that side of things. Right. Wasn't there rumblings that the DOJ was looking at uh, Binance? Yeah, there have been for a while. And I suspect that the DOJ has been looking at Binance for a while. Right. Um, my personal theory at this point is that they have charges filed under seal um, against CZ. And it's just a matter of he's in Dubai and they can't really arrest him. And so they're sort of hoping he might wander out of the country or something like that. But uh, it's it's really hard to say at this point. Right. And you had a, a thread on Twitter earlier today, which and, and this is always perfect because this is this is also becoming uh, a uh, like a, a a pattern with these uh, law breaking crypto companies that they love to have long chat logs of the evidence of them admitting to all of their wrongdoings in writing. And, <laughs> yeah, in writing. Yes. And, you know, you were running through some of them. Um uh, you know, by the, I, I, one that stuck out to me, I don't remember if this was one that you, you was in your thread, but one that stuck out with me, to me, and, and please feel free to share some of your faves too, but one that stuck out to me was uh, like the head or one of the executives involved with Binance.us just being like, what are, what are we doing here? There's no, there's no actual, <laughs> like, we don't actually have a role here. There's nothing yeah. happening here because this is, we're, we're just like, uh, for show we're like a, the cardboard cutouts in front of yes. the real operation going on at binance yeah and that was something that was alleged in both the cftc and the sec lawsuits is that despite the claim that oh yes you know binance.us is totally siloed from binance.com it's got a different ceo you know there's totally different stuff happening here it was really just sort of a puppet show going on where they didn't even know like aspects of their own business because they didn't have access to the data. You know, CZ was very much dictating what happened on a day-to-day -day basis. One of the CEOs actually um, 
left after it was like not even 90 days, I think, as CEO, because he realized he, he says something, you know, there's a quote in the lawsuit where he says something like, I realized that CZ was the CEO, not me, even though, you know, it was his title formally, but in practice, you know, CZ was very much running the show. Um, so yeah, it was, you know, just a totally shady thing to, to be happening over there. Um, but you know, it was this kind of weird, element of it where you know the first CEO had this whole project running where she was trying to get their independence from binance.com she called it project 1776 um where she was hoping that you know binance could become binance binance.us could become its own you know real independent entity and it ultimately she was fired and replaced by this other guy um Jeez. But it was really just, yeah, it was just a total front, really, to to sort of hand wave in front of the SEC and say, look, we're doing everything above board, um, and then, you know, divert customers to the dot-com side of things. And, you know, it really doesn't help matters that there was something called the Tai Chi document that was first reported upon, I think, in 2020 by Forbes. But it was this document pretty much laying out this whole plan that Binance had, which was to create this sh sort of shell company that would operate in the US. And it would look like it was regulatory compliant, while in reality, people would be sort of shunted over to the Binance.com um, platform and, you know, continuing their trading there using VPNs and by creating these shell companies that were registered in offshore uh, locations and all this different stuff. You know, they wrote out <laughs> a lot of things about how they were going to totally evade regulations and avoid becoming compliant with the U.S. securities uh, regime. And so it's, I think, going to be a little hard for them to defend given that there is this sort of paper trail of the whole plan ahead of them. Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking at some of these logs. It's amazing that a uh, COO of the company would uh, openly say uh, anyone who who, who accepts or, or buys BNB, literally their own token right now, is fucking brave. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then there's another one um, uh, likening uh, what's going on to the Titanic. Which is another yes. <laughs> not so great thing to say about yeah. your own company, right? Yeah, and there was one where um, it was the chief compliance officer, which, first of all, that's one thing I wrote in my newsletter. Right, is CCO, that, right. Yeah, that's who it was, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I wrote in my newsletter because this happens in both the CFTC lawsuit and the SEC lawsuit where it's like the most ironic possible job titles were the, you know, for the people saying things that totally go against what they're supposed to be doing. So in this case, it was the chief compliance officer saying something along the lines of we're operating as a fucking unregistered securities exchange in the USA, bro. Uh, which is just a crazy thing for a compliance officer to say, much less put in writing. Um, in the CFTC's lawsuit, it was a money laundering resource officer saying stuff about how she had no or they had no confidence in their geofencing and that they closed their eyes when uh, crimes were being committed on their platform. And it's like, are you kidding me? Like your job title is money laundering officer. Like, are you this? It's like. One of those things that if you were to write a book, it would be too unbelievable for anyone reading. They'd be like, oh, that's just totally contrived, you know? <laughs> well, well, maybe the money laundering resource officer's job was actually to make sure that Binance had the resources to money launder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. But yeah, there were just these, I don't know. So, And that's actually one thing that I'm really curious about is where these chat logs come from. Because the SEC, it's not like the SEC can go out and issue a search warrant. Right. You know, they, they can't really demand this stuff from Binance, especially before there's any legal proceeding actually on the books. Um, they, I guess they could ask nicely for it, but it seems pretty unlikely to me that Binance would turn over chat logs where one of their executives said that they were operating as an unregistered exchange. <laughs> like that just defies all belief. Um, so well, doesn't, I, doesn't the SEC have a rather, uh, I mean, I mean, I recall they made news earlier this year, uh, with their largest ever whistleblower award, something like $279 <laughs> million. I mean, I wonder if someone's hoping for a reward and, and leaking stuff to, uh, 
the SEC. Well, that's what I was going to say is that my guess is that there are people who are cooperating with the SEC here. Um, So we can see from the lawsuit that they've got depositions from the two former CEOs of the Binance U.S. entity. Um, So it seems like they're cooperating. And then I wouldn't be surprised if the chief compliance officer that's named in a lot of these chat logs with like a lot of different people is the common thread that would suggest why they have access to that although i don't think he's based in the u.s so i like i don't know if that really impacts things or not but i'm not really an expert on those types of jurisdictional questions but um it seems to me that it's likely that there's sort of a whistleblower aspect to this where they've got someone who is turning over this type of evidence um the other possibility i guess is that potentially there are um search warrants and things like that that are happening as a part of a criminal proceeding. And then those results are being shared with the SEC and the CFTC. But I feel like we'd kind of hear about that, you know, like about if there was this sort of search happening on Binance and that kind of thing. So I'm not really sure, but it's interesting to speculate about. Right. And I don't know if the criminal uh, aspect would let the civil one, you know, like run first with this evidence. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's the other thing is that You know, a lot of the time when there is a criminal case going, the SEC and the CFTC sort of have to back off and wait for the criminal side of things to get, you know, hammered out because they don't want the same witness giving conflicting testimony and, you know, what all these other things that can kind of screw up the criminal case. Um, So it is a little weird that, like, you know, there's probably some sort of criminal case in the background here, you know, either there's charges filed under seal or they're waiting, they're about to charge. Um, And it's a little weird that like the SEC and the CFTC have just come blasting out with these lawsuits. But, you know, it could also be that the DOJ has been sitting on charges against CZ for, you know, a year plus and the SEC is saying we've got to do something, you know, we can't keep letting these platforms just operate while you sit around waiting for CZ to, you know, fly to the U S or, you know, wander off to Canada or whatever. So, right. It'll be really interesting to see what happens. I mean, I'm yes. <laughs> like, like, you know, 2022 was like uh cryptos, uh, you know, fall in terms of like the, the pain felt by the customers and clients of the crypto companies. But it's seeming like 2023 is where the companies themselves are going to feel the real heat and fallout from everything that happened. Um, Yes. (laughs) One one of the weirder things, and uh, I think this is a good place to sort of end it, I guess, is one of the weirder things I've seen is the, the media coverage of all this that sort of like uh, uh, describes it as like, by the Biden administration's war on crypto or the Biden like because it's like no like there's no like Biden passed laws or regulations or rules or like Democratic Party only like laws regulations or rules that they're like uh you know going gung-ho with like these are the established rules and literally any administration Republican or or Democratic that would not pursue this would be it would be ridiculous. Like this is like, just couldn't be more plain, like nonpartisan. Honestly, this is financial crime in some instances, possibly. And it, it, when it comes to the, the Coinbase and Binance overlap charges, fine, uh, uh, really like longstanding old school, in some cases, financial regulatory laws that are being just outright broken and sort of like they're they're flaunting that they're breaking it too like this is not some sort of partisan um you know uh movement here yeah i mean the securities laws are from like the 30s you know it's not a binance or it's not binance it's not a biden type of thing um i think it's probably coming from the fact that gary gensler is a biden appointee and a lot of people very sort of strongly associate gary gensler with like the democrats and that side of thing but i think it's something that's sort of more been you know tacked on as an afterthought just because making everything political is sort of the thing to do these days Um, 
there's definitely some partisanship when it comes to crypto in Congress. Right. You know, there are there are certainly crypto advocates on both sides of the aisle, but you know, the strongest uh, anti-crypto Congress people tend to be Democrats and the strongest supporters tend to be Republicans. Um, so it is, you know, becoming more of a partisan issue. But I think you're you're broadly right that, you know, this is really just a cut and dried securities law thing. It's not some fancy political maneuver. And I don't think that Biden is you know, staying up late and spending his hours thinking about how he can destroy the crypto industry. I think there's maybe more important things on his mind. Right, um, right. When, when he's um, uh, when when Republicans are showing those videos of him staring off into space, it's actually because he's daydreaming about taking down the crypto industry. Yeah, it's, he's it's, just it's, fantasizing it's... about putting CZ in like a headlock or something. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, that would, I I mean, listen, I uh, I think uh Biden would uh get more support from me than ever before <laughs> if he came out as someone who fantasizes about destroying the crypto industry. I would I that would be I would be it, he wouldn't have to sell me too hard on that. I'd be I'd wait online now for November 2024. <laughs> you get your Biden sign to put in the window. All right. <laughs> Right, he'd have my uh, donations and everything. Uh, Molly White, thank you so much for joining me. It's always a pleasure when you uh, come on this show. Uh, what do you got uh, in the works? You want to share anything that, uh, or just drop the the uh, the links to where people can find your work? Yeah, uh, you can find my work in the usual places. I'm at uh, web3isgoinggreat.com. There's also newsletter.mollywhite.net where I write a little bit more long form. Um, and yeah, I, that's pretty much what's coming down the pipe for me. Awesome, awesome. Everyone check out Molly White stuff. Uh, Molly, hope to have you back on real soon. Yeah, looking forward to it. And in those few short days since I talked to Molly White, there has been some fallout to bring to you. Which to get to first? Let's let's talk about Binance's moves. Well, this should really come as no surprise, but it's still pretty amazing to see happen. Basically, just days after the SEC sued Binance, Binance comes out via their Binance.us platform, which we just spoke a ton about, and Binance.us announced that they would be suspending US dollar deposits and suspending US dollar withdrawals, give or take a few days for people to get their money out. Now, Binance blamed the SEC for, quote, creating challenges for the banks, which caused Binance's banking partners to pause fiat withdrawal channels. Basically, after this SEC lawsuit, the banks don't want to work with Binance anymore. Big surprise. But that's not all. Just a day after that, Robinhood, you know, the big popular stock trading app, Robinhood announced that the company would be delisting certain cryptocurrency tokens, which were explicitly named in the SEC's lawsuits, alleging those cryptocurrency tokens to be unregistered securities. Now, Robinhood only has a little bit over a dozen or so tokens on their platform, but there'll be a few less at the end of this month because they're removing Cardano, Polygon, and Solana. And then this came too, and now this is the one that's not being directly attributed to the SEC's lawsuits against Coinbase and Binance, but the timing here, a eh, little suspect. Crypto.com. Another cryptocurrency exchange, probably best known for those Matt Damon ads where Damon proclaims that fortune favors the brave. Crypto.com announces that they are closing down their institutional exchange. Now, this is not the retail exchange. This doesn't mean Crypto.com is going under and they're going to rename the arena back to the Staples Center. But the timing here is very interesting. The company is shuttering what is basically, again, their institutional exchange, which serves institutional investors, which includes pension funds, mutual funds, and university endowments. 
And while not the exchange's biggest customers, it is very interesting that there is no market for this institutional exchange anymore because basically all these institutional investors are looking at crypto over this past year. And if crypto winter didn't turn them off, if FTX going under didn't turn them off, they're looking at these two SEC lawsuits and they're saying for sure now, we're, we're out of here. We're, we're not investing in crypto. We're not dealing with crypto now. So crypto.com shuttering their institutional exchange. As always, we will be keeping on top of what's going on here. More fallout, more dominoes. What's going to even happen with those two lawsuits and those additional charges against Binance and its owner CZ. And we will be bringing it all to you as soon as we know on Scam Economy. To support this show, go to patreon.com slash mattbinder to become a monthly paying subscriber. Also, subscribe to the YouTube channel to catch the video version of this show at youtube.com slash mattbinder. Scameconomy.com for all the links to the podcast version of this show. If you're an Amazon Prime subscriber, Subscriber, connect your Amazon account to your Twitch account and give me your Twitch Prime subscription every month at twitch.tv slash mattbinder. It's free for you. It comes with your Amazon Prime subscription and it gets this show paid. It's a win-win-win. Follow me on Twitter, Blue Sky, Mastodon. I'm even on T2 now. That's another alternative social network. Just search Matt Binder and you'll find me. Be sure to leave reviews on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to this show. And I will see you all next time on The Scam Economy. Let's go.